laugh, as long as you have a good time. And I know people say it all the time, as long as you have a good time, then everyone else will. But I think it is important when you do comedy and stuff. And like I said, I don't take myself seriously. I take myself seriously with, with you know, the, the professional business side of it. But as a person, you gotta laugh and you gotta have a good time. And I think what's amazing is that a lot of people in this world now are afraid to laugh because they think, can I laugh? You know, is that allowed? Is someone gonna judge me? Is there gonna be some video of me laughing later and I'm gonna be, so I feel like, you know, it, it, when you come to the show and when you come to hang out with me, you get to laugh and do it. You're fine, you're safe. If anything, they're gonna come kill me first. <laughs> Don't worry, you're safe, you're safe, yeah. Thank you, guy in yellow. Yes, I. Yeah, I'm Ross, representing Manila Concert Junkie. So I don't um, know what it's worth you said, but yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna it's pretend fine. Like I did. It's fine. Uh -huh. We both love Joan Rivers. Yes. So my question is, what did you learn from her? And then second question, who are your other comedy idols? Oh well, I killed her. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I was one of the last. Uh, one of yes. the, One of two of the last. There yes. was one after me, Leanne Rhymes. So <laughs> she's the one who really killed it. But uh, I did the one of those in bed with Jones, and I met Joan a couple times in New York yes. City. Uh, at different events, because mm -hmm. she was a, she was a very involved in theater, and God, it's hot in here. Um, and she would uh, she would frequent a lot of opening nights, and so I met her a couple of times. Always gracious, always sweet, always took a photo. And then I had the opportunity to do the show, which was a lot of fun. And they say never meet your idols, but it was amazing to get to meet her because she was so goddamn funny. Uh, and, and also very generous because you know she didn't have to be generous. I mean, you're Joan yes. Rivers. You don't even have to look at me. Yes. Uh, but she did, and she was very, very sweet, and I, I appreciated it so much. And then she gave me this uh, this bag, uh, a gift when I left, and I was so excited I couldn't wait when I opened the car. And it was some shitty scarf from her QVC channel. <laughs> but uh, sh I, I travel with the scarf, and I use it to wrap up my makeup mirror every night when I travel. So she's with me. She's yes. with me. But um, I think she's one of my favorites, obviously. Don Rickles. I don't know if you're familiar. Don Rickles is very funny. Yes. Uh, as well, and not only did I enjoy their sense of humor, but I also appreciated their work aesthetic. I mean, they were working up until their 80s. Yes. So uh, it's pretty amazing to see their longevity and their commitment to, I was going to say commitment to drag, commitment to comedy. <laughs> I mean, well, Joan was in drag. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I do appreciate those two probably the most. I mean, there's several other people. I mean, I love Wanda Sykes, and I, I, I love uh, Chris Rock. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, they're, they're fucking funny-ass people. So uh, there's several people that I like for different reasons, but I say Joan and Don Rickles were probably the most of my style and the most that I gravitated to. Okay, thank, thank you. you, sir. Uh, Guy Denver. <laughs> Guy Denver. Uh, yeah, my name, is, uh, my name is Paul of uh, Manila Concert Scene. Okay. So uh, you recently tweeted something about season 11 being hashtag season of issues. Yeah. So if you were part, <laughs> if you were uh, part of season 11, what would be your issue? Is it uh, wouldn't have lasted. No, I just think it's funny. I, I, I laugh at the fact that. This is what, like I said, the show has evolved and it's turned into something else. So I, I find it funny when, when your ailment is stronger than your talent. It's like, what? This is a show about drag queens. Why are we talking about a sister in That I don't understand. You don't want to know what's going on under my skirt. But I'm not going to tell everybody. Um, so I find that part to be just a bit much for me. I mean, I'm a, I'm a drag queen. We go in, we laugh, we have a good time, we're hateful to each other in a dressing room, and we move on. But I think what's fascinating now is that, you know, it's also a television show. So the sympathy aspect comes in. I don't live by sympathy. Sympathy is not a part of my drag aesthetic. <laughs> and if you're dying, I'm going to go, good. <laughs> That's not what it's about. Uh, so for me, it is different, but I do find it quite amusing. It's like, you know, now we're in the second week of the show, and then one week was that, the next week was a stroke. I'm like, well, what the fuck is that? <laughs> I mean, where do you go from there? <laughs> are we picking America's next patient? Or are we picking a drag queen? I just don't understand that. I have a follow up question. Sure. So, what category are you on right now? What Category? Are you on right now? Uh, what, wait, what? Wow. <laughs> what category? Yeah, yeah. Oh, this outfit? Yeah. Oh, uh, jet lag, haven't slept, just showed up. Look, that's what it is. Yeah, Thank yeah. You. This is express lady look. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. Yes, sir. I had to get ready quickly. Yes. I want to make it's just their joke different from other drag shows, and at the same time, your past is worse. <clears throat> Oh, well, uh, well, I do comedy, and I think now, because everybody now has a one-woman show, that's the word, even though there's like 12 other people in the show, it doesn't make sense. Um, for me, I, I do stand-up comedy, so I'm on a stage by myself, and uh, this is my fourth tour that I've traveled uh, the world with, not necessarily been here, but uh, the fourth that I've done. And I mean, I'm doing stand-up comedy in drag, and I'm discussing topics that are all about. So that's what's different. I'm not lip-syncing, I'm not doing death drops, I'm not doing musical numbers with backup dancers, God knows you don't want to see that. But I leave that to the other 
people. Uh, but that's not what I'm doing. So it does get blurred now because everybody now has a, a, a so-called show. So people often wonder what it is. And in, uh, here in Manila, which was, of course, in the beginning when I announced that I was doing the show, people immediately were like, well, that's so expensive. Well, you're in a theater with a seat. You get a chair and you get air conditioner. Unlike today, you get air conditioner at my show. So it's also just everybody's been doing different types of things. And sometimes when they do the group tours, it's a standing room. And sometimes it's, you know, you get in early and everybody clumps up and there's musical numbers and an intermission. I don't have any of that. That's not for me. For me, it's literally a conversation with the audience, and we laugh and make fun of ourselves and everybody around us. Yeah. <laughs> May I sure. ask yes, question? Man. Sure. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, where would Roy be if Bianca didn't happen? Oh, God, I'd still be at my normal job. I used to make costumes for Broadway. I, w I would still be doing that. Mm -hmm. Well, I, as of today, I would probably still be doing that. You never know. Uh, I could have become a successful model. <laughs> <laughs> That wasn't a joke. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but um, no, I, I would I'll probably still work in the theater business. That's what I love dearly. And it doesn't matter how old you get or how, how ugly you are <laughs> when you work backstage. <laughs> so, yeah, I would probably still be with that. Yeah, you never know. God, dear, 82,000 pictures. Don't you have enough? That <laughs> 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 would be horrible. I'm going to untag myself out of work. <laughs> Thank you.